Hello everybody! Happy Wednesday. One of these days I will get around to making a new trailer and all that copious amounts of spare time that I have. How you doing, Terry? I'm doing great. You've been busy making dangles and ephemera packages and oh, marketing yeah. stuff? Yep. Uh, I got my new labels um, that, are, that cover bo both the front and the back. They fold across the top of the package. And give all oh give all my pertinent information, and I have officially changed um, Lucid Lizard Jewelry to Lucid Lizard Studio. Oh, that's perfect. That is the perfect name. That covers all the things you do. Hey, yeah. Philippa. Hi, Sue. Happy to see you guys here today. So, Lucid Lizard Studios. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you did that. I really am. Yeah. It, it just, um, people get confused by, she does digitals and her, you know, her things well, are jewelry. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you know. All right. Let's flip some cameras around and get busy stitching. Hey, Andrea, I am so yes, happy to see hello. you. All righty. There we go. You want to go back to audio, Terry? Sure can. Let's see. Yeah, it just it feels so good to, I don't know, do that, make those kind of biz, business decisions where everything kind of falls into place. I know when I changed from Poppiness to Susan Taylor Brown, it just kind of felt like I was stepping into my own light. And yeah. I think that's important. I don't think we I, do that easily. I no. I and I think people see you different. They have different they expectations. Do. They know? do. I if my name hadn't been so long, I would have added studio onto mine, but Susan Taylor Brown is already a mouthful. <laughs> but there's so many Susan Taylors and there's so many Susan Browns. And you have I know, to. I know, but so I had to have all three. Plus, Susan Brown was an entirely different person that I don't want to revisit. So Susan Taylor Brown, that's different. I, I claim that. I bought that name, Taylor. I changed my middle name from Diane to Taylor and... Uh, Paid $500 for it. Oh, Andrea, Facebook would not let you change. That's right. I remember you going through that. Try it again because um, they've got a new way of doing it. Um, you can do it. Um, I was able to log on and do it, but it said if I made a mistake and had to do any uh, al um, alterations that I would have to gain approval. So mm -hmm. maybe if you logged on, if it gives you the option of changing it without approval, you might be able to take care of that. I, I, um, yeah, I was surprised because I had done it once in the way back in the beginning because it used to be daydreams of the lucid lizard. Cause that's, oh, I vaguely remember that. Yes. That's my actual official name on my, um, my tax permit and stuff through Vermont. And but people just couldn't remember it all. Yeah. There's, there's so many daydreams. Well, there's becoming lucid lizards out there too. Um, yeah, and and having something that people can remember is really important. So even though oh, Susan yeah. Taylor and Brown are all very common names, having them all together, um, it does it it sticks in people's brain. I think so. Well, I'm glad it for that. It's like an official title, you know, yeah. like you know. I, I've met people, it's really funny, where they'll say, you know? oh, that sounds like a name that, you know, should be an author's name, should go on the spine of a book. And I'm like, as a matter of fact, it's on the spine of a lot of books. <laughs> so what I've got here today is really um, a no-brainer. This is a piece of wool in a beautiful green. It, so which, ah, it is. And I ran it through the washing machine a couple times. It didn't want to felt up, so I'm just using <coughs> <clears throat> like it is. Mm, excuse me. Mm. A sign of stuff this morning. I ask you. I am looking where it says that 40 people are watching right now, but we've only got two thumbs up. Do the thumbs up make a difference in how much YouTube gives you? Uh, it makes a difference in the attention that YouTube gives me overall. So it means like if I got, you know, a whole bunch of thumbs up, um, every time then people then will start seeing my videos in their feed and so it's just all any of the little things the comments that people make when you share a video um somebody gave me super thanks yesterday which was really fun nice. um, i don't get those very often but it's like oh thank you 
um, any of that kind of stuff, then those people, anytime they interact with me in any way, then it sends a message to YouTube that says, hey, you might want to see more of what Susan's doing. So I appreciate that. Yeah, because I noticed myself that when people are liking my shop, it seems as if I get more orders because probably yeah, you're getting more visibility. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the more orders I have, it, it, the more it increases. Right. So, so I it, all, it all feeds in together. And I've got this beautiful, um, I don't remember where I got this yarn, unfortunately. This was back when I was only buying single skeins. Now, as I find uh, uh, dyers that I love, I buy a minimum of two. And if it's one that I've bought before and I know I'm going to like, um, then I'll buy like three or four skeins, which gets expensive. But I'm such a soft ombre. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful and it's so soft. And basically what I'm doing here is just um, wanting to fill this mostly with French knots. Then I'll go in and add some rocks and sticks. Uh, same thing, I'm doing some more smaller pieces for the exhibition. And my rock gal, oh, my absolute rock star, I was chatting with her this morning and she's got some big rocks for me. I mean, like, you know, palm of my hand big and it's going to be a pain in the neck, but she is going to drill into them so I can somewhat secure them first with, you know, some threads before I stitch all over them. Because I have this idea of playing with big rocks and um, my driftwood knots that I got that are just really exciting. So we will see. <sighs> okay, I can breathe. We were racing around here like crazy trying to pick up the house because we've got um, a home inspector coming by later this afternoon to verify what is okay on the house for um, insurance purposes because you know California and homeowners insurance is such a racket right now. So we already know they'll say that they're not going to cover the roof because we're waiting for the architect to get the plans done on the roof so we can um, do that. Yeah, so it's a little bit ambitious, but I'm trying to, you know, the, the gal at the exhibition, she's, you know, she said basically kind of go wild. We don't want to limit you and you don't have to go large. You can go small. You can go stuff that will go on the wall. You can go stuff that will sit on a pedestal. Uh, she said they like to do things with floating shelves and to have small items that would go on floating shelves. So I thought, um, I don't have the pieces over here, but I was thinking, you know, a small thing of knots with a big stone and then one of these driftwood knots and then all my my wild stuff that goes around it. So in my head, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> we'll see if I can get there. Oh, gosh, this fabric is just like butter. Absolute butter. So what is everybody else doing right now? Andrea, have you been able to find any pockets of time to craft or have you just been so busy with real life that that didn't work out because I know that's frustrating when that happens. Breathe, Susan. Actually, I'll hydrate. How's that? <laughs> mm. And we should not have any problems, hopefully, today. If we do, it'll be my internet because they've already given us notice that tomorrow we're going to be without internet for part of the day because they're re doing like some major repairs. But last week, it wasn't my fault. It was YouTube changed their API and StreamYard didn't get, I guess, the memo soon enough or what have you. So anyway, and it's already getting warm here. I'm not ready for the warm weather. Oh, you did finish it. That's great, Sue. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to find the um, the link for the, the second live. And um, I, I'm floundering. <laughs> second live? What do you mean? I'm lost. Um, the um, Zoom. Oh, oh. Um, go to my website, go to, cause I move things around, go to the shop. Okay. And on the, the left side of the column down at the bottom of the, the, that page, that's where it is. Okay. I move things so around. Left hand. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Creative circle zoom. It should say, hopefully it says creative circle. Oh, and then creative circle zoom. I got it. 
Now everybody else knows how to find it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I was moving things around on the shop. And when I did that, <clears throat> I had forgotten the reason everybody had trouble signing up last time. I had forgotten I had taken inventory control. Um, I'd put everything at zero so nobody could buy the last session. So all of that's fixed now. Ah, Andrea, that's good. She said, I'm taking a couple of hours for me, crafty chat and a glass of wine. It's 8 p.m. here. Ah. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that later tonight. I tell you, that only a little bit of stress for the guy coming out. I mean, there's not like there's anything we can do with the inspection. The house is what the house is. And, you know, we're still renovating and nothing we can do about that. But still, you know, when you know somebody's somebody, you know, important is coming out, you're kind of like, ah, but that's okay. This is my last peopling of the week. I'm glad he's coming today. And then I don't have to people again, um, maybe until the live next week. Oh, no, I have meetings, I guess, Tuesday, on Tuesday. So that's not bad, though. That means a lot of time working on these pieces. I'm working on the big, if you've seen any of my posts on Instagram or my community yeah. page or on Facebook, I'm working on that big bullion knot piece, which is bizarre. It is a bizarre it's wild piece. Wild looking. Yeah, it's because I started off playing with bullion knots. I thought, you know, I just want to see what they look like masked because we know I love French knots masked. Hey, big mama Sandy. Um, and if I'd have been thinking, well, no, I, I can't say that if I had been thinking I would have planned it because we know I'm not a planner. So yeah, it started yeah. off as a doodle with bullions and I used up an entire skein of um, $40 yarn. Ooh. Yeah, because it was wool, it's wool, silk and um, yak. And it's it's just so smooth. Unbelievable. But of course, you know, I figured things out. So it's good. I figured things. You want to see it? No, I can't show it. It's on the big stand. I can't. You'll have to watch the pictures. I'm posting every day. And so I really, in my head now, I want to do this stump. And so it's not quite stump-like, but I think I can make you, I, can, I think I can do an implied stump. <laughs> and then the next one, I will definitely um, do some things differently. All right. I need to breathe. <laughs> Somebody ask a question. I, I'm just, I'm like all 900 miles an hour. I took a Sudafed for my sinus headache and that always, it's, it's like speed for me. Not that I need that or want that, but I needed it for my sinus headache. So there you have it. It is a lot. I mean, the, the, the hoop, if you've seen the picture um, Andrea of the bullion knots, it's a 14 inch hoop and they almost fill it. And that took an entire skein. Uh, it was like 437 yards. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I um, have a question. I have I'm, something. That, uh, it, we've got some secret squirrels out there today, at least a dozen of them. And I would like to give those out there who are watching their TVs. And I, uh, I'd like to tell them how that they can hit the like button. Thank you. What, what you do is take your control and push your up arrow. And it will highlight the name of the video you're watching. When Once that is highlighted, you hit your right arrow and go over past the channel to the thumbs up. And then you hit OK. It's very simple. It took me a long time to learn it myself. And um, a lot, I didn't think you could like a video when you're on your TV, but that's how you do it. Well, that is good to know. I know for me, what I end up doing is watching a bunch of stuff and then I have to go back to my watch history on my iPad and then I can go through and like the videos and leave comments. So there's a yeah. delay. That's, that's what it is with me. And I, you know, I do, I use a lot of thread and I'm trying, like I bought, um, this isn't it. Do I have any handy? Um, long time ago, I bought a bunch of, I don't know if you can see the difference. This is a uh, crochet thread. And 
it just doesn't give the same look. So I can do some things with it. Um, they made pretty good my little vines. So they made good little vines. I can use it on that. I'm, but it, I don't like the French knots most of the time with it. So I'm kind of like playing around with the old stuff, trying to think what I can use it up for. Because I know going forward, I'm only going to be using this not cheap yarn. <laughs> mm. I, I found a couple more dyers on Etsy. And uh, one of them just does one-offs. They buy undyed yarn from wherever, from um, closeouts from manufacturers or whatever. And then they dye whatever batches they have. So you might get one skein out of it or you might get five skeins out of it. So whatever mm -hmm. they have, you can't ever get again. Hey, mouse. So I did order a few of theirs and their, their work was beautiful. So it's like, okay, I need to keep in mind, you know, if, if I'm attracted to something they have, I need to buy it all at once. Yeah. So really, I need to get rid of all, not get rid of, I need to use a lot of this other stuff. You see, when I'm looking, this is crochet thread. It just... I don't know. It's the twist, although it does do the over twist thing pretty well. So, you know, there's other stitches I can use it for, but right now there's, there's just so many knots that need to be made. So many knots. Yeah. The word use is definitely more productive and positive than the word rid. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I have to keep reminding myself that, you know, there's, um, there's no need to get it all done at once. The getting rid of stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you guys told me that in the zoom yesterday, it was like, no, I, right now my concentration has to be on finishing these things for the exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can worry, you know, when that stuff gets shipped off, then I can worry about going through and de-stashing more stuff. Hello, Hummer. Hey, Hummer. Oh, you have a headache because of the rain. See, that always, always gets me. I'm sorry you have that too. Andrea says, what did Andrea say? Something about thinner yarn? She, she uses it for smaller, uh, to make smaller knots. Yeah. My trouble on the bullion knots thing, now that I want to cover up a lot of the bullions, it's really um, a struggle you know, it's kind of fiddly to get through because I'm trying to do French knots of moss over the bullions and uh, it's, it's kind of time consuming, but mm. yeah, mouse, we had hail here too. I just, doors, doors and windows open time now. I just had a thought. What's what if you did French knots? This is just general, maybe not for the piece that you're thinking of, but if you were to do uh, French knots on gauze and then like pre-dye the gauze so that it kind of matched the knots. Mm. And then you could put it on top of things without having a solid background. That's a neat idea. I've been watching a couple gals that do um, not just French knots. They do a lot of stuff on um, tule, the, the netting. Yes. And I'm amazed at how beautiful they can make that look. And then they float it over something else. Uh, you know, I have a hard time with the um, having a smooth enough background and not going, you know, not having so many lines going across. It doesn't matter with the nice. stuff I'm doing now. But there's, you know, and that's the thing. There's not enough hours in the day lately. Well, there never are. But to do some experiments, like there's a whole bunch of plant-like things that I want to do with the embellisher. And, you know, I just, I don't know that I will get them get the time to do that for the exhibition stuff. I don't know. Maybe some yeah. of them. Well, you know, it, it, but that's okay. It's okay. Write it have, down in your things to do. Yeah. And I, you know, I, um, yeah, I just need to keep head down and keep going forward. And, and that's good. That's what it's all about. Right. Is just making progress. I absolutely, I'm going to have to look and see if I can figure out who I bought this yarn from. I'd also like to say, that, uh, as far as uh, embroidering on the tool, for those who are working on um, a slow stitch or maybe, um, a, 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 oh, geez, just because books, I saw a technique the other day where they 
um, embroidered the knee of a pair of pants. And in order to cover the hole, they used the tool and they embroidered, but you could still see through the hole because of the netting of the tool. Ooh. So it looked like the embroidery was floating across the knee. Now you could do that with a just because book. You could create a window yep. and, and um, you know, have a, and Sue Brown might like this idea, have a window that looked in on the piece of fabric behind it but embroidered on the page you are currently looking at. Yeah. I've seen some cool things where they do with two embroidery hoops. So um, they would be more of a different size difference, but um, you would have stitching around here and then stitching here and you would do something over the edges. And then there was a gal, um, her name is Priscilla. She is syrup stitches on Instagram um, she did something where she was using up cheap hoops and staggering them so she could do like uh, little nooks and crannies so she could tuck mushrooms in there. Oh. But I'm thinking <laughs> about doing it where, you know, picture there was more of a difference in the size. What if you had, you know, if I stitched around here and then I stitched the, I stitched on this hoop and stitched it to it. And then I, I had another hoop. So I, I would be going up. And mm. thinking about going vertically. So, uh, and I got that idea by, I was moving all the wildscapes that are done and I had stacked them on top of each other just to move them into the other room. Yep. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you do, if you cover the outside of the hoop. Yeah. Like, so you wouldn't, I wouldn't want you yeah. to see the hoop, but I could totally cover it with all the different dyed fabrics and cheesecloth and all that. And the weather's getting nice so I can do a bunch of dyeing, but not until I get the stuff ready for the exhibition. And Sue, yes, hopefully there will be more than one exhibition. I was just going to get to that. Yeah. Uh, and Mouse <laughs> and um, Sandy have been talking about the fact that uh, the weather is a little odd in California these days and that, um, and that um, Mouse is experiencing some snow. No, not snow. Hail. Hail. Oh, because okay. Mouse lives near me. Well, yeah, yes, we had hail. I saw couple, hail maybe a week ago. We had hail, you know, a few days ago. Yeah, you can wrap it with more yarn, but also, you know, if you, let's see, where's one that had a lot of stuff on? I don't have one here, but, you know, if you were doing, if you're building it up and you had, Wait a minute here. I'm going to take, take this one off so you can maybe sort of get my eye. This is the way it's floating in my head. Okay. So if, if this was covered with French knots and I had this piece and I was ready to attach it to the next thing, I could, then I would be doing this folding it in such a way that I would have French knots coming down and I would still have felt that I could stitch into and you, you wouldn't even see this part. So I, I don't know. I'm just, um, well, you don't have to wrap the hoop first. You could, if you had it stitched down like this, you could stitch through, but there's a lot of things you can do, but I think literally just, I could stitch the felt here. If this was completely covered and then fold it over and then I would have things coming off the edges and hanging down. So again, this, this may be a future project because I picture it going quite tall. Um, that's the nice thing about French knots. They don't require, when I'm doing something like this, they don't require a whole lot of concentration. So my brain starts playing with other ideas. I also want to mention these hoops that I'm using here. Um, I absolutely love my Nerge ones. These are great. And I like that they're a different shape because I can be creative that way. But this is um, a Morgan no-slip hoop. And they are tongue and groove on the inside rather than smooth. Mm. And once you get it in here, it never moves. It's just, it's fabulous. Now, I didn't make this super tight because it's wool and it's going to stretch out. But my big bullion piece is in a Morgan hoop. I got it tight in there once and I have been stitching on it for a week with so much stitching and it's not loosened up at all. It's fabulous. So they're a little bit more expensive, yeah. 
but um, I tend to on the bigger pieces after I've done stuff with, you know, these other hoops, then I'll move them up into my Morgan hoops because they're so um, they're just so wonderful. Breathe. <laughs> A lot of adrenaline today. Oh, well, it happens, right? It happens. Just don't drive like that. No, <laughs> not going anywhere. I'm looking to see if I had any of my little rocks here so I could show you just the way I'm leaving little spaces here. I'm absolutely imagining, you know, sticking some rocks in between there. And then, Mouse, um, oops, go sorry. Good. Mouse was wondering how last week wound up. <laughs> <laughs> Last week was insane. Yeah. So so the YouTube changed their API and, and StreamYard didn't get the memo in time. So nobody could connect for um, about four hours. And I had forgotten how to uh, connect via YouTube and then they had changed things there. So I couldn't get on that way. So I ended up going over to the Facebook group for a little bit. And even that was jumping through some hoops. Hey, Joanne, you made it in from the garden. Did you get everything done you wanted to get done out there? She's planting a beautiful garden. She's going to have beautiful flowers and fresh veggies. Mm. All the good stuff. We got good stuff coming up. Um, John planted. We, what we do is he made this like uh, A-frame thing uh, for Christmas, for his um, his trains and villages and things like that, uh -huh. and um, we uh, a couple of years ago we started using it as a grow frame. Um, oh. uh, you know, so in the spring it gets converted to like a mini greenhouse, um, and we have heating pads there and uh, grow lights and um, and he starts we. Um, well, we started them this year in empty salad containers, you know, nice. like you get yeah. your, your, my, your greens and things in uh -huh. and um, we start our seeds in there. And so that's all filled now with um, salad boxes and all our stuff sprouting up in our, um, our, our zucchinis and butternuts and all that sort of stuff like came up overnight Wow. He left it to last to plant it, but it came up so darn fast. And there, the leaves, um, oh, I don't know, um, they're probably about the size of an Oreo cookie. <laughs> I love that method of measurement. I'm going to yeah. measure everything in the size of cookies. I like that idea. <laughs> oh, aphids. Um, I know you can use... Uh, um ladybugs uh, uh yes and i believe you can use uh insecticidal soap which is a different than regular soap but if yeah. you really dilute dish soap sometimes it will work but make sure that you test it before you use it on everything because last year john got the wrong spray bottle Oh. And he killed all the foliage on our eggplant because our oh, eggplant no. had an aphid infestation. And it, and so it set back the um, eggplant a little bit because it had to grow new leaves. It, it put it in shock. Sandy, did you see Margaret peek in here? If so, and she's secret squirreling, we will send her a big hug. Yeah, white vinegar. Now, I've heard white that. White vinegar will, will kill some plants. <clears throat> That's the problem we had. He used a bottle I had where I mixed vinegar with soap Ooh, and, yeah. and use it as a cleaning agent. Yeah. And he saw the word vinegar on it and thought it was going to be good for the aphids. Well, it didn't. It, yeah, we had a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, safer soap is the one that I've always heard recommended. Yeah. Oh, thank it, you, Joanne. Yeah, the color scheme on this. Well, you know, it's it's my greens. And uh, <laughs> I guess you weren't here yet, but I just really am trying to get some more smaller pieces um, ready for the exhibition and playing with some ideas. My gal over on Etsy that makes my drills my rocks for me. Um, she sent me some pictures. I asked her for some big ones. And so she sent me some pictures 
just before I came live and um, the, the rocks that she's got are probably as big as my hand. And so she's going to drill a couple holes in them so I can secure them a little bit. I think I'll probably have to put some wood underneath them. And then, um, then I have these driftwood knots and I just, then I want to have this stuff combined, you know, and I, as I'm looking at projects like this, that were partials, I'm thinking, okay, if I, I don't need to do much, but I can use this. If I cut it like this, I can use it to wrap around rocks and stuff. Yeah. I still have to send an email to Fiona and see how she's doing. <clears throat> Oh, mouse. And of course the white hairs, I tell you what, it, it's going to take me hours, hours and hours on each paste piece to get all the Zoe hairs off of things. Here is a Pinterest link for all of you people who want to well, this woman's link is also on Pinterest, but for all of those of you who want to get rid of your aphids here, she has eight different natural ways to do it. Oh, nice. How's that? Nice. Yeah, we don't have a few things we, we get aphids on. The, um, the fennel and a couple of other plants. The milkweed, of course. The milkweed is always covered with aphids. But as soon as we get... Um, a pretty big crop of aphids and the ladybugs come in and really clean everything up. Oh, and then my um, St. Catherine's lace also gets them later in the summer. And uh, the aphids come in and clean them all up for, or the uh, ladybugs come in and clean them all up for me. I don't have to buy them. They just come in. <laughs> Sandy says if Barbie shows up, we're going to do the alpaca boogie. <laughs> And jo Joanne says that she likes using neem oil for pests. Uh -huh. um, neem oil is good for a lot of things. Uh, but if you go to dispose of it, if you have extra and don't have room to store it, it is considered a toxin. Oh, wow. I know that because um, John works at the transfer station. So, so is neem oil considered okay for um, food that you're going to eat? Because that's always a concern, too. I'm going to look that up right now. Because, you know, I, I never, um, of course, after our first year here, when we started, I had um, corn and lettuce and the raccoons said, oh, no, you don't. Thank you for setting the table for us. We are going to take it all. And it, we just, we're not, um, we're not into it enough to create a special place with all the raised beds and gated areas you'd have to have a, a roof over it and even then the raccoons would figure things out so it's like nope that's okay we'll go to the farmer's market oops what did i do here i made a I made a big mess all right so now this because see i have a big mess i'm not going to freak out i'm just going to call that padding that is not a mistake that is padding so that i can have a little rise with my French knots. Well, you are late, Miss Barbie. Is this going to be a thing with you? <laughs> it's funny that you came in right after Sandy's comment about you, though. She's saying, if you show up, we're going to do the alpaca boogie, boogie. So now we want to see the alpaca boogie. It is time. Okay. So this article here. Uh, explains which plants you do not want to use neem oil on. Ah. So. Thank you for that, Terry. Yeah, we're having fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm calming down, so that's good. I like that. I like being calm. All right, so... So Barbie, did you ever do anything with all that alpaca stuff you got? No, it's not mysterious because if you've got, you know, if they come from farming backgrounds and they don't have a problem with aphids, it's probably because they have a balanced um, garden and yes. like ours that the natural pests come in, you know, the dragonflies and the snake flies and the 
uh, ladybugs, they're going to take care of things like the aphids for you. <laughs> you don't want to talk about the uh, the animal that shall not be named. I love it. I love it. So for a quick rundown. Hi, Barbara. Um, Happy Wednesday. Uh, if you don't, is it okay? Absolutely. Go. Okay. For uh, these plants, you do not want to use neem oil because they have delicate foliage and the foliage is what you want to eat and propagate. So it's lettuce, kale, spinach, arugula, pea, uh, parsley, basil, thyme, chives, oregano, sage, cilantro, marjoram, caraway, and dill. Yeah, I would think anything of an herb. Yeah. You know, since you're going to be eating the leaves. Okay, so. See, so now I don't have a mistake. Now I just have a little hill. That's kind of how the wildscape started was I kept, um, I either had a big knot or I picked a color that I didn't like or the, 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 you know, sometimes the textures of the threads didn't look good to one another. And then I just started stitching over them. And that's how I kept getting taller and taller. Now I do it differently, but. Oh, that's good, Joanne. She said, I don't have to use neem oil on my vegetables. Well, it's, uh, it's probably good for, for um, like zucchinis and things like that, that because um, it said, I, I briefly saw that it said that the, um, it interrupts the insect cycle. Oh. And with zucchini, they are vulnerable to a borer. And oh. what the neem does is when uh, the egg is laid and then uh, when the larva uh, uh, starts eating away at things, if it has the neem oil, the larva then will not continue to survive because it just it, it, the neem oil interrupts it. You got to be out of your storage this weekend. Oh, so you oh, need to think about alpaca goodness. floof. Yep. I know I've seen on Etsy lots of places that will take your fluff and spin it for you. Mouse, it, it's not a matter of size. We don't have a big piece of property and we really do not have pests. We've got, um, we're, we're just under half an acre and yeah. still uh, we don't have any problem with pests. Whatever starts coming up, then the other critters come in. And you can tell when certain things are around because that's when we'll have like an army of dragonflies and I can stand on the deck and watch them because they're going like at eye level and they're catching all the things flying around in there. Mm. So Bar um, Barbie, will you have room in the garage for all the boxes that have to come out of storage since you haven't quite unpacked all your current boxes yet? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Unpacking stuff is just such a pain. Because then you got to figure out where it's all going to go, right? <laughs> Yeah, and remember where you put it. Um, it's the legs. I don't know that that matters. I mean, it depends on. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't want to get into to um, spinning because yeah, I discovered that was not my thing. I tried the drop spindle, and it was not my thing. Just like weaving was not my thing. I love a lot of weaving that I see in embroidery work, and I absolutely hate it. Hate doing it. So it's like, nope, I'm going to have to figure out some other ways to get that effect because I do not enjoy it. <laughs> well, I would expect you to be rolling your eyes at me, Barbie. <laughs> oh, this is a good size to work on in the live because I feel like I'm making progress. I like that. So Barbara Clark, what are you up to today? Let's get some more. Whoops, sorry, didn't mean to hit the camera as I was pulling off yarn. Um, let's see. Here. I saw something interesting the other day. What um, did you see? John showed me a video that that was on Facebook of uh, a gentleman who was cutting up. He put some. Um, some soda bottles through a shredder 
and then um he then he then he heated them up and got a liquid and then he took it and he used what looked like a um like a cotton candy spinner and it, it spun these really wispy fibers made of the bottles wow and, yeah and then he took and um and started twisting it and um did like a uh he made a yarn out of it and then he took and he put it on this this circular like knitting machine that you see that people get for kids at christmas right and he cranked this this wheel he knitted it into a hat and and um then put a, a label on it that says recycled and he, he gave it away um gave it away to somebody so he he went from having a plastic bottle to have a finished product hat all on a video barbie exactly what you said the worried about the breathing but i have seen um when i've been shopping for yarn i have seen it advertised as being made from plastic bottles hey michelle Cool. Glad you can join us and stitch along. So it's definitely something that happens, but um, I would definitely be worried about the smells. I don't know about the smells. Oh, yeah. It, the, it, the fibers melting, being breathed in. Melting plastic, you're going to have um, so much outgassing. But, I mean, if you've got mm -hmm. all the proper safety equipment, I mean, it's the same thing. People that uh, paint Tyvek, and, you know, and, and iron it or heat gun it, you know, you get some beautiful effects, but there's a lot of um, mm. outgassing. So you yeah. really have to be careful about that. And I've just discovered the older I get, the more um, affected I am by any of that kind of stuff. I just can't. Hello, Marilyn. Hey, Marilyn. How are you doing? What's up in your corner of the world? Wait a minute. I saw it flash by. Can you see what Barbara said she was doing? Um. Mm -hmm. Barbie says Sandy. No, Barbara, going... Barbara Clark. Okay, Barbara Clark. Back, uh, okay. Hi, Susan. I am taking apart a completed knitted shrug. It was almost done. Well, it was done, but I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Oh, but aren't shrugs the sweetest thing? I, I think they're so nice. Well, I like them because, uh, you know, gaining extra weight, you gain it on your arms, especially yeah. as we get older. And shrugs just give that little bit of coverage that you. That's you, why you all my shirts are short sleeves. You, you, you know, my husband's the only one that sees me walking around the house here in just a tank top. That's it. Because those arms, I wish I used to have some beautiful, um, I don't know what they were called. I guess they were like a. It must have been like a kimono cape kind of thing because they didn't have sleeves, but they they were long and my arms would come. They would have been perfect now in this artsy thing. I used them from when I was speaking and I had three of them and I'm so sorry I ever got rid of them. Barbie says that anybody that has done cotton candy knows that you will find the mess everywhere in your <laughs> hair, in your clothes, under your eyelids. <laughs> uh, but cotton candy made from plastic bottles. Yeah. I, I definitely think I would be wearing some sort of mask. Um, A big, loosey goosey one for sleeping in. Oh. Oh. Oh my my! That's you bought wonderful. some cedar wood oil. Love the earthy. See, I can't. Yeah, I can't anymore. Just none of this. I used to love um, scented candles and all that kind of stuff. And now the scents have to be outdoors. Um, yeah. Moses, I thought you were going to say <laughs> I used to have some healthy, beautiful arms. I was thinking, I guess I've never considered my it, it, considered it my favorite part of the it body. Is, it is my least favorite body part. Oh, I love it. No, I have my grandmother's flabby upper arms for sure. 
Well, Even most- when I had muscular upper arms, uh, still, it wasn't the thing to be proud of as a woman. <laughs> Roller skating and horses, I had muscular legs, but not arms. Yes. Um, um, background, this is wool. Um, I bought a bunch of scraps of wool from a gal on Etsy and the color was right. And some of it felt it up for me when I threw it in the washing machine and some of it didn't. So this is just, uh, it's, it's just like butter using this beautiful yarn on a wool background. It's just, I mean, I can't believe how fast I'm going. I'm super pleased with this progress. Joanne, doesn't it look like velvet? So soft. It does. It does look like velvet. Unfortunately, you know, you won't see any of this when it's done, but. Just on the off chance. Yeah, well, and I'm I'm trying to get better at um, matching my backgrounds to my threads so that I don't have to worry about, you know, what might show through. So this was good to have the brown because I was thinking of dirt, but I'm no longer going to be um, on the final pieces. I don't want to be stitching with anything that I have to worry about um, unraveling because then I got to worry about how I'm stitching it down and stuff. Whereas if I have felt or wool, um, and if I've got felt, it's, it's wool felt, I can cut it wherever and I don't have to worry about shredding. You know, I can cut little pieces of it and it's not going to shred. Hey, Angie, how are you doing? I thought that was Angie. I was going to say, I was going to guess, but. Are you looking me. for vintage or antique velvet to make Christmas ornaments? Ooh, Ooh. I'd be on eBay. Or go oh, clothing shopping. Yeah. I don't I don't know how antique you need it. Yeah, if you want vintage. Sometimes velvet gets dusty like gets um like uh UV rot to it or something. Yeah, you have to be it depends on how the stuff was so- stored. Yeah. Your mind is still seeing Terry's ideas on the gauze. Yeah, it's <laughs> fun to stitch on different materials. Um I did some on the netting like this. And what's fun when you stitch on things like this is it's much easier to also manipulate it if you want to do other things with it. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Yeah, you don't want the stretchy kind. I totally understand that because then you have to use a serger or a zigzag stitch or something. But um, it, like a lot of velvets are... I've got some velvets that that I got from clothing, um, jumpers, um, and uh, sometimes you can find velvet pants, um, yeah. you know, and um, just some. I, yeah, I would look. I go to eBay when I'm looking for clothing to recycle. I go to eBay and um, look for you know whatever I can think. I would put in like velvet dress, velvet cape. Um, anything oh, that I can yeah. think of that would have a large amount of yardage. Mm-hmm. But if you want it to be antique velvet, that's that's a different thing. Um, yeah. Mary Jo Hinley is on Etsy and she dyes. It's not um, it's not stretch, but it's also not antique. But she dyes beautiful, beautiful velvet. I've bought some of it for my little poof balls. Um. Uh, can I mention a, another YouTuber? Absolutely. Come on. You guys know we share. Oh, well, I just want to ask before I go out there. Um, Sheila Gingrich. Yes. Of uh, Boho Daydreams. Yes. Doesn't have antique velvets. She That's hand right, dyes her velvets, but she has some beautiful colors that give that antique look. Yes, she, you she know, does like a beautiful job on that, yeah, and sages, and um, just like beautiful, beautiful cerulean blues and things like that. Yeah, you know, they have that antique feeling, so that they would go with antique laces and things, and um, yeah, um. Tr- tr- uh, Sheila only does her stuff uh, by order. Um, she uh, goes on YouTube. So if you look her up on YouTube, what she uh, does is she announces her new packages on her YouTube channel and they sell out very quickly. Yeah. So, um, but 
she has some of the most beautiful stuff. And when she does a package, sometimes it includes matching trims. Yeah. So, yeah, her packages are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So that's something you want to check out, Joanne. The uh, Mary Jo um, Hinley, H-I-N-L-E-Y on Etsy. Her velvets, oh my goodness, are gorgeous. And I was able to buy um, a variety in small pieces so that I could figure out what colors I liked best. Um, they've just been really a joy to be stitching with. The thread, oh, the thread studio in Australia has got so many beautiful things. I wish shipping wasn't so crazy. Well, I am super pleased with this. I may just sit down and add some rocks later today. I got a lot of rocks to put on a couple pieces. I mean, like two handfuls of small rocks that are going to go on one piece. There you go. Silly me. I was talking about Thank going you. on YouTube. Now you got a link. There you go. Thank you. No, You're you know, we always, we, we have not been sharing a lot of the people in the chats links because it really got in the way of us being able to chat, but um, I'm totally happy to support other people. It's not, it's not about me. It's about us all, you know, being inspired to create whatever it is that calls us to be created. And if you're here and, and, and you're doing something special, I will certainly share. Your yeah, life. let us know. Yeah, I know. It's just like nothing worse than paying for shipping. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have I bought things um, on Amazon because I wanted to have it right away? <laughs> many times. Oops. <laughs> it's like, well, but I want it now. I want to work on it this weekend. I can always wait three days because if I run out of things to do, the house is always waiting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is wow. that, but come on, who wants to clean house, right? <laughs> I'll clean house, clean garage, clean the fish you got chicken. Oh, coats. the garage is a lost cause for us. Something's I mean, the weather is getting waiting. nicer and I can get out there and, and do that. But, oh man, it's crazy. All right. Well, this makes me very happy. And I'm thinking maybe I can bring in one other color for an accent. <laughs> we just said another one of Barbie's favorite words. Boy, you Rush. just really don't. You want us just to sit here at, in the cone of silence, huh, Barbie? <laughs> Put on the cone of silence because everything <laughs> is a trigger word for Barbie. Yeah. I'll tell you. Some people. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> garage, garage, garage. Yeah. <sighs> well, I, you know, I'm grateful that we only have a one car garage because, um, you know, it's full. <laughs> and, and I don't mean with a car. Oh, oh gosh. Alpacas, <laughs> flu. Yes. And Sue Brown's joining in. She's saying flu. <laughs> so so Barbie, tell your if if you're up for it, tell your alpaca story for the people that don't know it. There's people we're taught we're laughing at an inside joke. Let people know uh what, what the deal is with alpaca flu. What a great deal you were getting. Hey, okay. so um Mouse was asking for junk for junk journalers. I was going to glue together cardboard packaging to make paper buttons. Should I remove the laminated layer before gluing? Um, I if you're gonna do it back to back, I don't think you'll see the the um, yeah. the laminated section. I, you know, I would only worry about whether or not the paint. Or glue will stick to the laminated part. That's the only time I would worry about it. I know, Barbie. Everybody's so me. Oh, and Angie. Yes, that's another bad one. House cleaning, house cleaning, house cleaning. So I have a glue to recommend. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look it up. I'll be right back. Yes, that gives Barbie plenty of time to tell her <laughs> alpaca floof story. Oh, my gosh. gosh. I forgot the name brand. I have been buying so many different glues to try um, gluing stitch pieces into the wood boxes. 
finally ended up with a, a Gorilla Glue that I think I'm going to try, but I'm terrified. All right, so Barbie says, I contacted a farmer and asked him if I could get just a tiny bit of floof for a project. Okay, so Barbie's thinking just a little bit of floof. You know, I just need to accent my project. He said, sure, come on over. He, he's a farmer. He's got alpacas. He's got floof and he is willing to share it with Barbie. So Barbie goes running over. And then what happens? And has got her popcorn. It's easy enough to pull the cardboard apart, mouse, if you're concerned about it. This man, bless his heart, was older than dirt and had only maybe six teeth. Okay, are you getting the picture? I'm picturing Barbie there, going there with her hands out, saying, floof, please, give me some floof. And what does the old guy do to Barbie? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I should have tried. To, I'm trying to keep talking while she was typing because I know it takes time to, oops, what did I do here? I just, oh my goodness. What? I have no idea what I did here. And he had obviously not had anyone to talk to in a long, a long time. time. And we all know that, right? You go visit great aunt Agnes and she's like, sit down, let, let, let's chat a spell, right? So Barbie, being Barbie, with all her good Southern manners says, absolutely kind, sir. I will sit down and chat with you for a while in exchange for just a small amount of floof just a little bit of alpaca floof that I can put in my hands and take home and use on my project. <laughs> I can picture this guy so well. So I get there with my little sandwich bag and he wanted to introduce me to all his alpacas. Can you see him? I'm sure they weren't number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. I'm sure they all had little names, different colors, Beautiful alpacas, um, not often the most friendly of critters, but, you know, Barbie, again, utilizing her Southern manners, she is walking along with her little sandwich bag. You know, sandwich bag, it just fits in the palm of your hand and, and meeting all 12 of this guy's alpacas. She met them all. I'm sure she had something kind to say about each and every one of them. <laughs> Definitely 12 different personalities. Absolutely. And when she got done with all the introductions and all the chit chatting with this kind man, and she still got her little sandwich bag, she just wants to have him filled with some floof. And he had to teach me about the llamas and the alpacas and why one had a bad attitude and one was a good mama. <laughs> I mean, she got the life history of these critters, which is important because, you know, we pour our heart into our art. And Barbie was going to take the heart of this alpaca fluff and put it into her project. And it was going to make that project all the more special because of it. Right. And you still keep in mind sandwich bag. So an hour later, he takes me to the fluff shed and he's going to show her the fluff. You know, I'm sure he's, he's parceled out. He's got one of his little barn buckets and he's just going to give her a handful of fluff so she can take it home and she can work. All the heart that fits in a sandwich bag. It's amazing. It's amazing how much heart the fluff shed. Yeah, that should have been her first clue, right? That he had a shed just for the alpaca fluff. And Barbie's got this little car, just a little tiny car. But that's okay, because she just had a little, you know, sandwich bag. And then <laughs> he had eight lawn and leaf bags for me and was apologizing that it was only seconds. Lawn and leaf bags, you fill those things up and they are almost as tall as I am. Eight of them that she had to graciously thank him for and somehow find a way to stuff him in her little car and take him home all the while saying, thank you, thank you, kind sir. I so appreciate all this floof. It is going to make my art rise to the next level. 
because I know, I know Barbie. I know that Barbie just made that man feel like he was giving her the best gift ever. And since that time, Barbie has been um, ignoring <laughs> that pile of floof. Thank you, Barbara. That's kind of you. Now, if I could just figure out the right stories to tell for some art things, I would love to, to be doing more of that. My computer is not letting me type in the chat box. Ah. It keeps on coming up with the word the. Oh. <laughs> and then when I put in Loctite, it says lock the. So it might not, there might be a YouTube thing where it doesn't like the words. All right. And Barbie says, I whip out my little sandwich bag and he ignores it and starts dragging those bags to my car. And <laughs> it in. Bye, Sandy. And she's like, I'm no, 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 that's way too much. And he was totally ignoring me. And filling up her little car. Can you just picture her? I mean, I picture her. And he's telling me all the wonderful uses for this. I love it. I picture her in this car with a bag, you know, just kind of smushed up against her face. And she's driving with one hand because she can't even reach the steering wheel. Because it smells so bad. <laughs> uh, I didn't, uh, wasn't there something about those bags needed to be cleaned and that's why they were seconds? I don't know. I, I, oh, I think Barbara, I'm yeah, friend sent a creation story he wrote to chat GPT and asked for a story in return. It was quite amazing what he got in return. It's it's interesting, chat GPT. I had chat GPT interview me, and that was really cool. And Barbie's like, what am I supposed to do? Like drag them back to the fluff shed? No, your Southern manners would not have let you do that. I'm going to have to take off out of here, too, because I've got um, I've got an insurance guy coming by the house. Barbie, thank you for, for revisiting your um, your nightmare scene and telling us the story and letting me um, share that with everybody because I just think it's so much fun. It's so much fun. And yeah, it's nasty stuff that has to be cleaned. But there are places that will clean it for you and do stuff with it. And I think it doesn't matter if it's seconds, but then you have to decide if it's something you want to work with. And on that note... Yes, it is a bar. It's a wonderful story. Thank you for hanging out with me while I made so many French knots because this is super cool and I'm going to have fun with it. And I am glad we had no problems with the internet. Um, knock on wood. Next week, hopefully, will be cool too. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thank you, Terry, for modding for me. Um, Loctite mm -hmm. was the glue she was going to talk about. It's, it has to be stick and seal. Okay, stick and okay. seal Loctite. It is low odor. And it dries fairly quickly, and it's great for what you'll be doing, Mouse. <laughs> there you go. No, no fluff, please. I got wool coming today. All right, everybody. I will see you next week. Bye-bye for now. Bye.